Good morning, students. Today, I am going to take a process lesson for second language English medium students. I will tell you the name of that lesson. Before that, I am asking two questions for you. In which year we got independence? All of us know. We got independence in 1947. That's all of us know that year. And which year India became a republic? That also I think that you know. That answer is 1950. 1950 is the year when we got a republic. Next, we should understand who is the founder of this, our constitution? Who is the founder of our constitution? That we should know. His name, what is his name, what is his short name, and what is his full name, everything. We all of us should understand because he is the founder of our constitution. That, the name of that founder is Dr. V. R. Ambedkar. Doctor, he got a doctorate from Columbia University. He got a PhD from the Columbia University. So his name is Dr. V. R. Ambedkar. That means Bhima Rao Ramji. Bhima Rao Ramji Ambedkar is the full name. Bhima Rao Ramji Ambedkar is the full name. He is also called as Baba Fag. We are Ambedkar. We are saying it in the short form, Ambedkar. Ambedkar was also called as Baba Sahib. Baba, we, are, we all are giving him respect. Because he is very eminent person. So Baba Sahib is called as Baba Sahib. He was born in Ritnagiri in Maharashtra. Ritnagiri. He was the 14th child of his parents. 14th child of his parents. Next, he was a politician, a famous politician, juristic, and moreover, a social reformer. Social reformer also. He was very famous in every field. He was a very famous politician, jurist, and moreover, jurist, and moreover, a very active social reformer also. He was also a voracious reader. Voracious mean, means the person who is eager to read only is, is called as voracious. He was a voracious reader because once he went to England related to third roundable conference, he went to England for participating in third roundable conference with Mahatma Gandhi, our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, you know. So he went there, he went to attend a meeting in the roundable conference in England with Mahatma Gandhi. At that time, he purchased many books, so many books he purchased. Moreover, when he went to USC, he was uh, so much uh, affected or he was so much influenced the, by the amendments, amendment or changes of the constitution made in, Ameri in America. 14th amendment of constitution was made in USC. That's uh, what is the 14th amendment? You can see what was the uh, content of that 14th amendment. We know that uh, in USA or America, discrimination was prevailed always. Discrimination, color discrimination was always uh, prevailed there. I just even now also we can see some kind of discrimination. Uh, a few days back you, uh, you might have read that a black man was already killed. So agitation was started. Even now also you can see, your know, today's paper also you can see something. But uh, it was very severe, very acute in the past. Because they did not get the freedom. But anyway, after that 14th amendment of that constitution, that, that these people got some freedom. They got the freedom. Till that period, the condition of these black people were, the condition of these black people was very miserable or very pathetic condition. It really affected, I mean, it really influenced the, this Ambedkar also. He thought that in India also, some oppressed class or some depressed class or some backward class or some poor class, they are suffering a lot. They were suffered a lot. They were discriminated by other class. That depressed class, the condition of depressed class was very miserable. So he was shocked by seeing that thing. So he thought, why in India also we should make some changes 
in the constitution level, then only they will get some relief. At that time, he was impressed by Mahatma Puli. Mahatma Puli. In other words, uh, his full name was Jodi, Jodi Raj Puli. Jodi Raj Puli is full name, but he was called as Mahatma Puli. Mahatma Puli. So, he also suffered a lot. He made many uh, institutions and he also he was very active to emancipate or to eradicate or to abolish it, or to wipe out the condition, the several condition of the poor people or the uh, downtrodden class. He also was uh, very active, he was called as Mahatma Huji. So, Ambedkar was keenly interested to uplift the condition of the discriminated class or this depressed uh, class, socially backward class. He related to his work, he has published the three newspapers. The name of one newspaper was called as this Mokanayak. You can see Mokanayak is there. Mokanayak is one. Then Bhishkadi, then Bharat. Another one is Bharati. Then Bhishkadi, Bharat, Mokanayak. He also published some newspapers. And in that newspaper, he always gave importance for the upliftment of this backward and poor class or this untouchable class. Gandhi called them untouchable. Gandhi he was also there, he was very pioneer. He was the foremost uh, runner, what you can say. He was the foremost person who took initiative to uplift the backward condition of this uh, miserable class or this poor, this poor people. So, so, or scheduled caste, they considered as scheduled caste. So, he moreover, he founded, he established a party also, that is called as the Independent Labour Party. Independent Labour Party, he established it for uh, demanding the grievances of this uh, poor, I mean, backward or depressed class. He just uh, fought against uh, this discrimination and as a result, he founded a party, he formed a party and the name of that party was called as the Independent Labour Party. Nestor is that we know that he has contributed many things in India for our nation. We should always think that the main contribution was the contribution of fundamental rights. Nowadays, you know, there's fundamental, there are fundamental rights in the constitution. Fundamental rights. A person has, we, we, we are ready, there are many fundamental rights. Nobody can violate that fundamental right. Because a person should not be in, uh, hurt by others. An individual should not be harassed by others because no discrimination should be shown against the, I mean, in the view of this constitution. That's a fundamental right, freedom to speak, we can easily, freedom to walk. Then we, we have a right to take food. We can believe whatever we are believing in our mind, you can go to temple. This is all our fundamental rights. No discrimination. Freedom to work, freedom to work, freedom to work. Freedom to do work, freedom to speak, everything else are fundamental rights. So we are always indebted or we are always obliged or we are we are always we should remember the name of this person for what is contribution of fundamental rights. He became was elected as the chairman of that uh, drafting committee of that constitution, drafting committee. Because he got law degree, he was thorough. He, he has already acquired his law degree also. He was acquired his law degree also. Next thing was that in 19, according to the Act of 1935, he was elected in the Bombay Assembly Constituents, Bombay Legislative Assembly. B. R. Ambedkar was elected in the Bombay Legislative Assembly in the year of 1935. He was elected. So he just he, a debate, you know, he made strong objection against this discrimination because he was thorough everything, for everything. Moreover, another thing is that uh, we can see that uh, he has already understood the, the pros and cons or he has already understood the consequences, the effect and uh, result of that uh, constitution. He made three, he divided the three sections. These are the three pillars of our constitution. One is legislature, next one is executive, next one is judiciary, legislature, don't forget, legislature. Then executive, then judiciary. These are the three fundamental pillars in our constitution. Legislature, you know, what is near? Like you are studying in your history. In history class, you can see all these things. In the legislature, every bill is formed or passed in the legislature. Every framework of that the rules are approved in the legislature. That is, 
based on that we have the assemb assembly election and the parliamentary election. We have the representative of the legislature. Then after that it should be implemented. That is executive, second one. First is legislature, second is executive. Executive. Next one, judiciary. If anything is mistaken or if anything is barred or if anything is prevented or if any mistake is happened, immediately we have power to go to the court because we should not violate our constitution. The fundamental principles of constitution should not be violated or disturbed at any cost. So at that time, whenever, whenever we are seeing that one person is violating the constitution, immediately we can approach it to judiciary or court. That is called as this judiciary. So these are the fundamental uh, I mean, the three wings of our constitution. One is legislature, executive, and judiciary. These are the three pillars in the constitution. Next, we can see that um, yes, already he was uh, uh, supported by some other luminaries or prominent persons such as uh, Alladi Krishnarav Swami, Ayengar, Gobala Swami, etc. These are other luminaries or prominent persons who gave the ardent, who gave their support to this person. So we should always remember this people also. So anyway, due to his uh, continuous uh, hard work, uh, nowadays the condition of these Harijans, Gandhiji called them as Harijans or untouchable people. Nowadays their condition has improved a lot because they are able to occupy most of the higher position. They are appointed, they, they are able to get the job of ambassadors and the judges and many other representatives where they are holding higher posts. But even then, we can say that the, the, um, we could not achieve, even after completing for decades, even after completing for decades or many years, we got independence, even then, the, uh, the, uh, his determination, his, his dream is not uh, completely fulfilled. Anyway, we can see, we can hope that a day will come when all their uh, sufferings will be wiped out. So we can expect or we can see that a day will come when there will not be any discrimination against these people. Anyway, it is already reduced nowadays due to his active participation, due to that fundamental rights. Nobody can show any discrimination to this scheduled caste or scheduled trust or origins. Can be called them as origins. So these are the features, life history of this B.R. Ambedkar. He died in the year of 1956. He died near of 1956. So this is this is written. This lesson is really written by R. Venkatraman. You might have heard about that president, president, former president. He worked as the president of India between 87, from 87 to 92. 1987 to 1992, he worked as the president of India. He wrote in memory of to commemorate this leader, Dr. Ambedkar. So this is the uh, main life history of this Dr. Ambedkar. So I will read that textbook and after that you should be open and uh, again I will explain. One trait which marked Baba Sahib during his student days and in fact throughout his life was that he was a voracious reader. Voracious means uh, Always eager to read is called as this voracious. Always eager, very interested to read is called voracious. He had an insatiable taste for books. He bought books by curtailing his daily needs in New York. He is said to have purchased about 2,000 old books. And it is recorded that at the time of the Second Round Bible Conference in London, he bought so many books that they had to be sent to India in 32 boxes. In the beginning, itself, I told because the borders is very bad. Then, what happened? He has already collected the many books and he has already put in the boxes, and totally there were 32 boxes which are fully com completed or filled with the books. And that, I mean, that 32 boxes were sent to India. All these books were read by this BR, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So, he purchased it when he was when he was in New York. He purchased it, two thousand books. So we can see how much he craves, or how much he satisfaction, or how much affection he has shown to read books. He was a voracious reader. We can see he was a voracious reader. He was interested to read all books always. Next, 
It is important to record here when Major in French Zone, Dr. Ambedkar, writing USC, he was drawn to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution of the USC, which gave freedom to the black Americans. So I told you that in America, a Constitution amendment or change was made. It really influenced Dr. Ambedkar. After that amendment, black people got the freedom. Constitution of the USC, which gave freedom to the black Americans, he so advanced the parallel of the situation for the depressed classes in India. On returning home, Baba Sahib came to be greatly influenced by the life and work of Mahatma Fuli. I told you that he was influenced by an eminent person, Mahatma Fuli. His original name was Jyotiraj Fuli. So he was influenced by the work of this Mahatma Fuli also. Because he thought that why we can't change the condition of poor people, depressed class or this scheduled class in India also. Because in America already law was made. So through that constitutional measure we can already make a change. The, the water of a classless society and women's uplift, the need as well as feasibility of reform impressed itself on Baba Sahib's mind and he decided to devote all his time and talents for the amelioration of his unprivileged brethren. Brethren means uh, brothers, brothers, plural of brothers. So he thought we should ameliorate, ameliorate means to wipe out, or to abolish, or to eradicate, or to emancipate, we can say. To stop, to avoid, ameliorate. Newspaper started by him, such as Mokanaik, then voice could better than Samada. They are at once recognized by authentic voices of the professor. He has already published some news newspapers. In that newspaper, he has already given many articles to understand the life of these poor people. He gave importance to raise the voice of this downtrodden class or oppressed class or suppressed class or these origins. Likewise, Institutions set up by him, such as Hidagarmi Sabha and the Independent Labour Party of India, became vehicles of change. During the same period, Gandhi was pioneering his epic reform in Indian society, which included the uplift of the trust classes from whom Gandhi had tamed Harijans. Gandhi called these children classes Harijans. These depressed classes were called by Gandhi as Harijans. Baba Sahib was elected to Bombay Legislative Assembly in the elections under the Constitution of India Act 1935. Baba Sahib made effective contributions to the debate in the Assembly on a variety of subjects. His flair of legislative, legislative work became evident to the whole nation. He was elected, he was elected to Bombay Legislative Assembly. So after waiting there, he made he, he made many contributions and he involved in the debate because he was deep thorough, he was thorough about the subject so he made debates after waiting in that assembly and he strongly he favored his supported for the religions. Soon the constituent assembly of India afforded by Dr. Ambedkar the opportunity to give the most notable and permanent shape to its social philosophy and to his undying faith in the dignity of human beings. Baba Sahib was not in the conference, but it must be said to the credit of fast sighted and objective leadership of Indian National Congress that it requested Dr. Ambedkar to serve on the drafting committee of the Constituent Assembly and made him in his chairman. Even though he was a member of even though he was not a member of the Indian National Congress, they have already the leaders, the leaders of the International Congress understood the ability of this Baba Sahib or Dr. B. R. Ambedkar because they understood his ability. So they may appointed him as the chairman of that the drafting committee of that constitution because they, are, they knew that uh, this man was very, uh, very active and moreover his knowledge was profound. As chairman of the drafting committee, Dr. Ambedkar anticipated even considerable requirement of the new policy. Drawing from the examples and experience of other nations and the distinctive needs of our own society, he raised brick by brick the magnificent edifice. The edifice means a system, magnificent edifice, which now stands as the fundamental rise in the Indian constitution. Step by step, he just made 
constitution of India. Step by step, he understood everything. After that, he made the constitution, he made fundamental rights. He gave a contribution of fundamental rights to the Indian. There were, of course, other luminaries on the committee like Alladi Krishna Swami, Ayyar, and K.M. Munshi. Alladi Krishna Swami and K.M. Munshi, they were other very prominent person. And moreover, he was helped by others also. Gopal Swami, who also made viral person who will recommend it as the pilot of the various provisions of Indian constitution, Dr. Ambedkar. The combination of facts and frankness and utmost patience the meaning and scope of the different provisions of the drafting of the constitution, he, he had the rare gift of unraveling to the most complicated legal concepts in a language which the layman, at least B. N. Rao, performed this task. B. N. Rao helped him very much. He simplified the language. He simplified the language which was understood by the common people. B. N. Rao helped him very much. B. N. Rao performed this task naturally. Dr. Ambedkar had a clear perception of the mutuality of the three pillars of state legislature, executive and judiciary. He realized that jurisdiction, jurisdiction of each should be clear and untamed. Untamed at the same. That means it should not be humbled, that's un untamed. It should not be disturbed or it should not be disturbed. So it is called untamed. At the same time, he had a sense of the importance of the role of citizens. Here, while making this constitution, he was very clear and he thought that no dispute should be, no conflict should be there between these three bodies. So everything was clearly pictured, everything was, everything was given in a detailed manner. He did not give even a minute chance to make a split or conflict between these three bodies. That means legislature, then executive and judiciary. All are independent, there should not be any disputes between these three bodies. So he was very careful while framing that constitution. The constitution is a fundamental document. It is a document which defines the position and power of the three organs of the state, the executive, judiciary and the legislative. legislature. It also defines the powers of executive and powers of the legislature as the against the citizens as proposed as of the constitution is not merely to create the organs of the state but to limit their authority. Because if no limitation was imposed upon the authority of the organs, there will be complete tyranny and complete oppression. Oppression. That means really he made what are the powers of a citizen, what is the power of a legislature, what is the power of an executive, what is the power of judiciary. So everything is very clear. Otherwise, it will make some anarchy or some uh, competition, some kind of uh, confusion. So, he was very clear. Jawaharlal Nehru chose Dr. Ambedkar to be the first law minister of independent India. This was a recognition of Dr. Ambedkar's skill in the held of law and legislature as also a tribute to this vision of social justice, a vision which is sought to be infused into the new Indian policy. But above all, this was a tribute to the success of Baba Sahib, Dr. Ambedkar's own campaigns against social injustice, who could have dreamt that one born to Maha family would one day become not only a law minister, but a law maker and he hailed as a modern Manu. He, Ambedkar is considered as a maker of modern Manu. He belonged to Maha family, Maha family. Because it is a poor family and moreover, Nobody dreamt or nobody thought in their mind that one day he will become the lawmaker. He became a lawmaker, not only lawyer. He was lawmaker. Nobody dreamt. Nobody could dream that one day a day will come when Ambedkar will become the lawmaker. Really, that was what happened. He was the make. He made the laws. All laws. In the four decades and more since independence. Much progress has been achieved in providing equality of opportunities to the people. Members of the scheduled caste and find doors which have been closed to them for centuries being opened. Previously, scheduled castes, they were not allowed to go for jobs, they were not allowed to do all work. There were some restrictions, some discrimination was already made, but 
after the this constitution they also got they became they they got higher post they began to enter in higher post they were able to join in any other post no legal bar exists today for self expression or self advancement they are enrolling themselves in institutes of higher learning and entering public services they have come to occupy high offices of the state both at the center and the state judges ambassadors and governors have been drawn from their ranks and they have they, they have equated themselves credibility in all these position of responsibility even uh, now you can see now the present the present president of india is also belongs to scheduled caste so they are holding higher position ramnath kovin you know this all he belongs to he belongs to this scheduled caste but no nowadays their conditions very much improved due to this constitution we we are made that we should be always indebted to that person now they they are becoming ambassadors and they are occupying higher posts and yet much remain to be done on social plane the annual reports of the commission of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes list the several violations of the law and several instances where not withstanding the statute book members of the scheduled caste have been discriminated against baba sahib ambedkar's work will be truly complete only when social discrimination is completely eliminated from our society even then even after even after passing we are near just we got independence near for decades many years passed but even then we cannot say that they are getting freedom fully even now also some kind of discrimination can be seen in some parts but it can be removed it should be removed or it should be eliminated or it should be avoided or it should be abolished baba sahib ambedkar always stressed the importance of constitutional methods to achieve social objectives in an interesting observation he was distributed the method to civil disobedience non cooperation and satyagraha as the ground of anarchy the observation he did not to do any violent method he always said everything that everything could be solved due to the constitutional method he followed only satyagraha and non cooperation only he did not try to start a revolt against the government he did not try to start any revolt against the government he always followed the principle of satyagraha and ahimsa the observation assumes the importance in the context of public education free india it is one thing to utilize these methods in struggle against an alien power like we all always told this violent method is not good because it 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 can always achieve our goal through constitutional method and non violent method their right to rebellion is recognized against the government without the people's consent mis directed and volatile such agitation invariably results in the loss of lives and public property he thought that if you are starting agitation if you are starting a revolt it will take the loss of many people it is not good for our country it will make damage or loss for our country so he always thought non violent method he told that we can achieve everything through constitution about 2005 years ago buddha had questioned the caste divisions in india he said the only valid divisions are the divisions between those who are noble and wholesome and those who are ignoble and unwholesome that means those who are those who are hiding and have not that was what buddha told buddha also about 2005 years 2500 years ago sri buddha you know that buddhism was founded by at uh, this uh, buddha sri buddha he also opposed against this caste discrimination he told that this 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 type of discrimination is not good so he criticized according to buddha there are only two classes in society one is higher and have not that means who are hiring money and who are not hiring money no other discrimination is possible or it is not good the tamil poets avai had said similarly that there are only two castes in the world namely the charitable who give are superior and the miseries who do not and are therefore inferior the same way tamil poet avai avai the same as tamil poet he also said the same thing he also gave importance that there are only two classes one class will give some charity or one donation some contribution very helpful to the poor people but there are some other class who are very miser 
That means they will not spend even a single amount. So there are only two classes in society according to the Abbe. He was very famous uh, uh, Tamil poet. Throughout the course of Indian history, great sages and saints exposed the holiness of these divisions and sought to bring all the communities of India together in a creative partnership. But cast by virtue of his first structure, showed itself to be firmly entrenched. But even after doing all these things, we cannot say that say, the discrimination, caste discrimination is completely removed or wiped out. It is, we cannot say it is completely eliminated. Even now also we can see, but the strength is reduced. The strength of that discrimination is reduced, so that we can see. We cannot say that we have achieved 100%. We cannot see. Still we have to do many things. Under the policy of divide and rule, the British ruler is exaggerated cast the distinctions and divided the people of India further to strengthen their hegemony over us. It was given to two great Indians of our time, Mahatma Gandhi and Baba Sahib Ambedkar, to repudiate caste and to proclaim the oneness of the Hindu community. You can see that Mahatma Gandhi and B.R. Ambedkar, they are responsible for making oneness in the society. We should be always thankful to these people, Mahatma Gandhi and B.R. Ambedkar. Because the British, when the British people ruled India, they always tried to divide our society. Divide and rule was their policy. Because whenever anything was happened, they supported one section. Then after that, they tried to get the, the support of that section. Divide and rule policy was followed by the British government. But only after the arrival, after entering, or after the uh, active work of Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Ambed Kerr, we got some kind of... Uh, and equality. Gandhi did so by remaining in higher caste, caste of their duty towards the plus classes. Baba Sahib Abedkar did the same by remaining them of their inherent rights to, e to equality with higher and more powerful caste. Once stressed the duties, the other stressed the rights together. They brought about veritable revolution in social thought. He thought that uh, we should be always careful about our duty. Always we should do, we should think about our duty. When Baba Sahib passed away in December 1956, Jawaharlal Nehru made a moving reference in the Lord of Sabha describing Baba Sahib as a symbol of revolt. Mahalma, he, he died, I told you, he died in the year of 1956. At that time, our Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, first Prime Minister, he told that he was a symbol of revolt. We are made was considered as symbol of revolt. I have no doubt that whether we agreed with him or not in many matters, that perseverance, that persistence and that, if I may use the word, sometimes violence of this opposition to all this, did they keep the people's mind awake and did not allow them to become complacent about matters which could not be forgotten and helped in rousing up these groups in our, in our country which had suffered for so long in the past. It is therefore sad that such a prominent champion of the oppressed and the oppressed laws of India and one who took such an important part of our society has passed away. There can be no doubt that the day is not far off when Baba Sahib Sambhetka's dream of Samada will become reality. So uh, when he passed away, when he died, Gandhi wrote something. He, he, he told that Baba Sahib or Bihar America was a symbol of revolt. He told that we cannot compare with that person. Nobody can compare with that person. Anyway, they, they will come when his dream can be fulfilled. That is what he has made many contributions to the country. Nobody can deny. Even after it is not fully achieved, but we can dream that they, they will come when complete equality or samadha will be attained in our country. That is what Jawaharlal uh, Nehru told once. So, uh, this is the end of the story. That is not all of you understood. Uh, first, once more, you can see. Firstly, uh, Baba's Bia Ambedkar means Bhima Rao Ramji Ambedkar. That name, Bhima Rao Ramji Ambedkar, it is written by R. Venkata Raman. You know, he has worked as the President of India from 1987 to 1992 to commemorate him. He wrote this thing in his book. Next one is that, first one, 
First thing you should understand is family background, Mahar family. He belonged to a Mahar family. That is the 14th child. Next thing, he was called another name. What was his another name? Baba Sahib. Baba Sahib. Next thing, he was influenced by some person who <coughs> Mah Mahatma Gandhi and Mahatma Gandhi influenced him very much. Then by uh, this part influenced him <coughs> to make some change in India also because in America they have made a resolution, they have already made some amendment in their constitution. What happened after that amendment? After that amendment, the black Americans got the freedom. So it inspired, it inspired or it gave a stimulation to America to hire or to make such an amendment in India also. You always fought against the discrimination. You always fought against the discrimination and you always uh, supported the poor people or backward class. That's another thing. Next the other the persons who uh, inspire, who supported the uh, others, some other luminaries, eminent persons also gave support. Who were they? One is Manadi Krishnavu, Ladi Krishnavu, then Swami Ayanga, Ayanga. All this they gave their support, another thing. Next one was that he was appointed as the chairman of the drafting committee. Then you should understand the fundamental rights. Fundamental rights. Next, three pillars. That means you, the legislature, executive, judiciary, all this you should understand. Legislature, then executive and judiciary. Then fundamental rights is very important three pillars. Three pillars, you should, if a person is asked, what are the three pillars? You should write. Legislature, executive, judiciary, very important thing. Then, next one is that nowadays, uh, what is the condition of this Harijans or Scheduled Caste? Nowadays, they got, they are getting freedom, they got the freedom, they are able to apply or they are able to, uh, they are able to accept any job. They can apply for any job. Then, what are the improvements? Nowadays, they are becoming judges and they are becoming ambassadors. They can uh, join in any higher institution. So whatever they like they can do, they cannot be discriminated because constitution will, uh, immediately constitution will take action. It is a constitutional violation. If anybody is doing any step against it, this emergency, um, <coughs> constitutionally or legally, it is barred by the government. They will be arrested also. That is the law introduced by the government. So it is ended this. I think that you have already understood it. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.